The Ultimate of Power, The Universe is One, from Man's Greatest Discovery by Henry Harrison Brown. Nor can we venture to speak of life as one of the varieties or manifestations of energy. Professor William Crookes. All about us and within us exist rates of vibration known as forms of energy, some of them forced by man's ingenuity to record themselves by aid of mechanism, others yet waiting this sort of detection. Recording devices to reveal the laws of light, heat, chemical affinity are familiar, but no one yet in a similar manner records thought or gravity. William J. Martin in Century Magazine. Force is not gravity, nor electricity, nor magnetism, nor chemical affinity, but will is the typical idea of force. Dr. Brown, Dean of Boston University. It is evident that there will eventually take place an integration by which all orders of phenomena will be combined and recognized as differently conditioned forms of one ultimate fact. Herbert Spencer. We know nothing of the ultimate of force. Science is already getting something like a firm hold of the idea that all kinds of motion are but forms of one persistent force arising in one fountainhead of power. Duke of Argyle. All phenomena are in their ultimate analysis known to us only as facts of consciousness. Professor Huxley. Thoughts and feelings are the fundamental facts from which there are no escaping. John Fisk. The laws of thought are the laws of the universe. Buckner. Thought is power. Victor Hugo. Great men are they who see that spiritual force is stronger than material force, that thoughts rule the world. Emerson. This last quotation from Emerson shall be the text of this essay. Science and philosophy have ever sought for the ultimate, for the origin of power. Religion has ever been the recognition and worship of power. Theology has been a system of belief in power. Theology assumes as beginning of things, which is only a beginning of the manifestation of power in things or by things or through things. From the earliest theology to the latest, it has been the incarnation of power that has received praise, thanksgiving, sacrifice, and where possible, love. Omnipotence is the God of the world. Power has thus been recognized as one, even before modern science so decided. The Greek, placing fate above all the gods, located power as one. Monotheism is the belief in the one power. Thus power has been the one principle without which no one could be. It has been the one thing without which there was nothing. With power, omnipotence, all things were possible. Hence in the ideal, power has been the chief and the prime constituent. To subdue, to create, and to exercise power has been man's ambition. For power is life, and life manifests in power. So much power, so much life. From child making mud pies to Edison in his laboratory, from voodoo to Episcopal bishop, from seance to synod, from club to dynamite, from water to gas, from wind to electricity, from pugilist to commander-in-chief, from toy boat to Dewey's fleet, from ward boss to king, from money to magnetism, from medicine to mental science. There has been only one cry, one desire, one hunger. It is the infinite demand for power, never to be satisfied until man finds and manifests infinity. To meet and to satisfy this God demand within himself, he has conquered the external forces and made them obey his will, only to find greater desire and greater unrest. He conquered the wild horse and made him his servant, but the power that conquered the horse 
is greater than the horse. The horse never yielded to the physical power man exerted, but to what? He conquered wind and made it to fill his sails and bear him wherever he would. He is more powerful than the wind. He chained the water and fed it with flame until harnessed it became a slave. That which harnessed steam is more powerful than steam. He reached out into space and grasping the bolts of Jove, taught the gods how to wield their power as he buckled them to his cars and made the fires of heaven his torches and their dynamic forces his messengers. But the power that could thus teach the gods is greater than the lightning. Lightning would ever have remained lightning and been self-destructive had not man, thought, come to enfold and direct. Man virtually made electricity by converting destructive power through direction to use. In man, then, lies the greater power, the power that can control all power, not himself. Everywhere else is the principle recognized that it takes superior power to control any form of power. Why not recognize the same law here? The conqueror comes in some greater form of power. This principle is admitted, and yet, because of present methods of thinking, it will be said, man matters because he is man, because he thinks and builds mechanism through which power may act. True, if thought can thus direct, is not thought power? The very banks of the river are power. The still car is power, and only superior power can move it. Nothing can move nothing. Nothing can direct nothing. Only power can direct power. Had man any sails until he thought sails? What caused him to think sails? Recognition of and faith in external power. Faith led the way to achievement. As long as man recognizes only external power, what Emerson calls material force, he will have faith in that alone and will use that alone. When he shall recognize interior spiritual power, then he will have faith in that form and will learn to use it. He once was used by the material forms of force which he now controls. He is now used as a leaf in the Mississippi of spiritual thought power. He will learn to use it and then be the master of fate. When he thinks of himself as power, he will use himself as power and will be power. Then will all other forms be obedient to him or be useless. Thought is power. It is the highest form of power that man, the director of the omnipotence in himself, can use. He is thought. He is power consciousness of itself. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is within you. Kingdom means, if it means anything, power. That power is God. God is omnipotent and ever-present. Then it follows that where God is, or where God's kingdom is, there is omnipotence. He is daily manifesting the universal power within himself. He is omnipotence. Can omnipotence be limited? Not by itself. Man only can limit himself. Self-limitation is then the only possible limitation to power of man. This limitation is a thought man places over himself. This thought is born in ignorance. When he knows himself as he is, he will not be limited. Man, therefore, as an individual, balances the absolute. He is the equal in power to all that is not himself. The me and the non-me are equal. The universe is one. The ultimate seat of power so long sought is found. It is in man. The ultimate power so long sought is man. As far as man is concerned, he is all power and has only to use that which he is himself is. Any power outside himself has influence upon him only so far as he, by recognition of it, has given it power. He confers upon things their power to harm. He is master and can still every tempest by his peace be still when he comes to know himself as soul. 
ignorant of his heirship to the crown of life, he yields himself a slave where he should reign as king. He manifests all his power in those fundamental facts of Fisk, thought, and feeling. He can control all that is not himself, and also himself by those laws that Buckner calls laws of the universe, for they are only the laws of thought. Since man can control thought, he is the master of the universe and a law unto himself. His universe is his body and his environment. He is as supreme as his individual universe is God in the absolute universe. That will, of which Dr. Brown speaks, is the persistency of force, the law of crystallization, the survival of the fittest, the descent by heredity, and all natural laws of science and philosophy to which man now holds himself responsible and to which he will be slave until he shall, as an individual, control by his will the undifferentiated will that is manifesting through him. That integration, Spencer prophesizes, is made as a fact by man's greatest discovery. It is demonstrated daily by the facts of telepathy and mental healing. To assume, as in the common belief, that all man can do is to direct physical force or to relegate, as does Professor Crooks, life to some other origin than that of the ordinary force is to limit man to the use of external force and this to the neglect of himself as force. It is to shut the gates of the kingdom. Lift up your heads, O ye eternal gates, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? Man. Man recognizing himself as power. Religion and science are now so wed by this discovery that hereafter they are one. One in the recognition of power and all power as one. Why am I thus positive? Because as surely as the early electricians saw that they were dealing with power and felt then all the possibilities it held for the future, so do I realize the possibilities of thought when directed, as it can be, by the conscious will. Not long ago, I blindfolded a boy and thought to him, you will go and touch the mantle. Soon his body swayed, and had he not stepped, he would have fallen forward. He was soon touching the mantle. I mentally requested a young man who did not know that I was going to experiment with him at the time, bring me my clock. He went at once to the shelf and brought it to me. Asking the boy why he went, he replied, I felt pulled that way. The young man said, I felt impelled to do it. What pulled? What impelled? Thought is power. It is true that it may be said that I awakened thought in them. If so, thought did the work. That which awakens power is power. That is all I am now demonstrating. Some form of vibration went from me to them. Accumulate enough of vibration or of energy, which is the same, and something must move. A lady requested me to treat her daughter by absent method. I told the girl mentally that she would be well at such a time and that all pain would leave at such a time, told her to go to sleep and to awaken at such a time, all of which she did. Thought is power. Demonstrations similar to these thousands of teachers and healers are making. Who shall limit the power of thought? Faith can move mountains. Faith is only thought, united with and directing all the soul forces. Faith is self-suggestion of power. Faith is a suggestion of the conscious man dropped into infinity of the unconscious. Faith is telling the soul what to manifest. Faith is the conscious power of God. Faith is the power of the conscious God. This concludes The Ultimate of Power, The Universe is One, the third essay for Man's Greatest Discovery by Henry Harrison Brown. If you received value from this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more audiobook videos. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for your support. I'm sending you oceans of love and peace, and I'm wishing you success in all of your life missions and purposes. See you soon.